Here we are at DesignCon, with today is Michael Yang. Welcome, Michael. Well, thank you very much. Great so to be here. You, so you live in the world of semiconductors. Yes, unfortunately for too long. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, where, what's the state of the market right now? It is great. Uh, a lot of uh, enthusiasm, a lot of optimism. Um, the, the reason that has brought the subject of semiconductor up to the forefront is really the, the demand for uh, electronics, demand for semiconductors, and you know, the lack thereof, we sort of run into the shortage of semiconductors. So really recently that has been the hot topics of uh, discussion within the semiconductor industry. Is it shortage because of the pandemic or something else? There are actually many, several reasons for the shortage. Uh, pandemic just one of the things. Uh, obviously COVID brought an entire different uh, buyer behavior, consumer behavior. You buy more TVs and televisions and and so on, you spent less money on um, traveling and other things. So what that does is give you an induced uh, increased amount of uh, demand for electronics. But also the semiconductor shortage stemmed from um, political policies that was put in place, U.S. versus China and so on. That really shifted some of the demand towards other products and that caused you know, a, a certain uh, short of supply. Um, other, reasons for, other reasons for the shortage is also um, some of the uh, products such as power semiconductors and display driver ICs traditionally produce on 8-inch capacities. Unfortunately, 8-inch capacities has actually been pretty short, relatively short uh, for the last few years. And now this increased demand has just pushed that over the edge, so to speak. So. There are quite a few re different reasons, and the way to resolve it really is you got to address each one of those reasons to overcome the shortage. So how does that happen? How does the market stabilize, or does it? Well, um, two ways, really, you'll it, it'll, it'll return to more stabilized supply-demand situation. One is obviously you wait for the demand to normalize, right? Um, uh, COVID-driven demand doesn't last forever, you know, demands for TVs, demands for PC eventually will subside and, and, and normalize. But the other is also to spend the necessary capex to build uh, additional capacity to, you know, to support the demand, increased increase demand that we see today. Um, the, one specific example is uh, electric vehicles. That demand is not subsiding, right? We have turned the hockey stick on, on electric vehicles. Penetration will continue to increase, and therefore the demand for products such as uh, displays, uh, power semiconductors will continue to, continue to increase. So you have to spend money to build the capacity to support that type of demand. So does that involve a gamble of sorts for some industries in terms of where they place their bets for investments? Yeah, uh, this is where everybody try to be, you know, gain intelligence from have a better understanding of, you know, how demand gets uh, stronger, how, how demand gets built over years, and you spend accordingly. You build, you don't build capacity overnight, and you just got to build them out over time. And you got to make sure you have the products to support it. You got to make sure your, you know, the entire industry is in a position to support the overall demand. So with, with the pandemic and, and the, the change of behavior, all of a sudden, as you mentioned, consumer electronics going up, does, does the industry does basically just shift gears for different kinds of markets and now it has to shift back over time? Yeah, simply put, yes, very much so, right? So if you, uh, if you wind the clock backwards to early last year um, when the lockdown first started, PCs were in shortage because all of a sudden companies need to buy PCs for the employees to work from home. So all of a sudden uh, demand went up, skyrocketed, and the manufacturers have to place the necessary orders for the components. And the component manufacturer has to go produce those additional components. And the fabs, semiconductor fabs, basically moved their allocation from other buckets, segments. Like automotive? To, uh, like automotive. <laughs> to support this demand, right? So, and when the automotive demand eventually came back <laughs> up, and unfortunately they got a ticket says, you're in back of the line, right? right? Wait until we call you. So, yeah, so that's basically what caused that particular uh, shortage is, you know, using COVID 
uh, driven demand as an example. So, yeah. So right now, which, which beast gets fed first? Because uh, we've got automotive is, I mean, they're, they're not doing well based on a lot of people we've talked to here. Uh, and the price of cars is not going down. Yeah. Uh, electronic, where, where, where's the focus? Well, the focus is obviously these uh, long, sustained demand segments like electric vehicles. Um, companies are not, you know, all, every company is smart. They, they have smart people looking at the trends, looking at the uh, behavior patterns, and they anticipate shifts in demand changes. So obviously everybody's working towards shifting their manufacturing uh, allocation towards these longer term uh, demand segments to right. making sure they optimize their business towards that. So if the market is that savvy, which they obviously are, and they all move in that direction, is there then going to be a glut on that space? This, absolutely. There's certain risk to that. And especially, you know, we are, uh, it has been a hot topic. And not only a hot topic due to supply shortage, also a hot topic due to um, regionally desire to be self-reliant, right? Meaning China want to become more self-reliant, uh, dependent on their own semiconductor uh, supply and demand. Um, so does Germany, so does Taiwan, so does U.S. And so everybody has this desire to making sure they have sufficient uh, supply for their demand. Um, the risk here is obviously when, when the industry don't cooperate as a whole, you have isolated supply around the world. So they don't operate as efficiently as a global economy or global supply chain would. And therefore, that would introduce potential risk for oversupply and potential glut. That sounds like going backwards, though, all these isolation pockets of, of uh, development, if you will, as opposed to global supply chain. Yeah, uh, this is you know this is what happens. Unfortunately, there's other forces at play, not just let, trying to have, build a most efficient glo global supply chain, right? Uh, the government have their own desires and uh, wants and needs, uh, so they want they want to make sure their products and overall economy is not uh, being stagnant or you know, bottleneck by other regions, right? So, uh, no, it's not going to be the most efficient, but you're probably not going to run into supply shortage maybe as much in the future, so. Right, good stuff, yeah.